Hello friends, welcome to A Little Room for Healing, where we aim to create a little more room in the world for authentic connection, insightful healing, and a deeper understanding of our hearts, ourselves, and each other through honest conversation. My name is Joel. I'm a Reiki and 13th Octave Lajo Chi practitioner, a facilitator for deep healing, and your host. My friend Ezra Go has returned for a second exploration on the podcast. Ezra is a somatic movement coach. He uses movement as a language to create spaces and containers for people to have conversations with their bodies, especially when there's fear in the body or fear of the body. On this episode, we delve into the world of meaning and how one can get lost in a maze while seeking it. We look at who's making the maze and why. We also talk about the connection between the mind and the body when it comes to communication. Join us on the journey through Ezra's maze. As usual, we begin with check-ins so that we can be more tuned with each other. Hi, Ezra. Hey, Joel. It's great to have you again. Back in the soup with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just had some good mushroom soup. We did. So that's nice. And another thing that's exciting for me is that we're back in my actual little room for healing after a few episodes away. Mm. And if you are watching the video version, you can, I am now able to introduce to you the new table that my brother made for me and for the podcast. Uh, I love it. It's beautiful. And I'm so happy I finally get to use it. <laughs> it's been over a month since, uh, it arrived uh so thank you to my brother and let's jump in with check-ins mm. i'll go first on this one let's see i am hot and sweaty and a little tired maybe a lot tired i'm uh, there's a grogginess. We had a late night last night and a day full yesterday that was just, uh, it was a lot. Some stuff was going on yesterday. <laughs> 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 That's kind of hanging over into this space today. Uh, maybe... Uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit more about it later. Uh, and yeah, just this feeling of really open to what will happen in this conversation with you because uh, I feel like we're both low energy, but I'll let you speak to your state uh right now yeah <clears throat> yawning a lot so that's pretty reflective um it's actually hard to tell what i'm feeling it's um i'm having one of those experiences where there's a lot going on so if i really try to tune in then it's like, yeah, some weird muscle tensions around my neck and shoulders. My hips feel a little restless and just like stuff doesn't feel quite comfy. Um, but it also, it feels like my awareness is just kind of floating above all of it. And it's hard for me to even like get in there to like see what exactly it is I'm feeling. So a lot of sensations, mm. not a lot of meaning. Um, but other than that, yeah, I feel, I feel like I'm too tired to be self-conscious the way I was last time. <laughs> so I'm excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> <laughs> I am noticing, uh, even in the way you're speaking that it isn't there as much. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't even have the capacity. I'm like barely having the capacity to pay attention to you, much less <laughs> who the hell is watching us. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm kind of excited to see how this unfolds too. Oh. That's where I'm at. I'm at. Excellent. What can we get into? 
<sighs> is there anything about anything more about the experience you're having right now that you'd like to get into? Hmm. Well, after the last, I would say after the last podcast I did with you, and then like watching back the uh, the episode for myself, um, and just like noticing things um, about myself, um, also kind of unfolded a little process since then, um, and just getting clear on how self consciousness is. I couldn't say it properly last time. But it's this weird experience of like you're watching yourself and then you're watching yourself watch yourself and then you're watching yourself watch yourself watch yourself watch yourself and at every point you're checking whether A, you're doing the right thing B, you're watching yourself in the right way that, you know, like should you be watching yourself more compassionately and then you're watching, the, yeah, there's like there's a check at every point it's so exhausting mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm getting exhausted just listening to you <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And the, then the weird part is that um, when that mechanism is there, it's like, well, I can see that I probably need to take some of that pressure off myself. But then you're seeing through the last security camera that goes, you need to take pressure off yourself. And then that just becomes one more layer on it. And it's like, how do you get out that loop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the if that's the mechanism that you uh, I that I see the world through, then anything that I do is going to come in through that same chain chain of command, and it's like, how do I approach things completely differently? Um, and that's been a, I guess, venture into the uh, like unknown and uncertainty. Yeah, about like. Um, don't try to not even think about what it is that you're supposed to do. And that's really scary a lot of the mm. times. <clears throat> What's scary about it for you? Mm, for me, it's like um, there's no way to even track what's happening. It's like you figure it out after, which might mean that you hurt people or you hurt yourself or uh, things... Uh, go really really wrong so it's uh, this like I want to say detachment from outcome but it's not even detachment of from outcome which is scary don't get me wrong that is scary but what's even scarier is the feeling like you don't even have a way to assess the outcome and whether you like it or not it's like it's just a thing that happens and maybe you find out whether you like it or not, or maybe you don't and it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, I don't know. There's some, um, I guess all I can say is like, what it brings up for me is that uh, it feels very lacking in meaning. And what is a life that you can't make meaning out of? Like, you know, um, yeah, if you can't make meaning out of experiences, then what is life? That's, that's what it brings up for me. Hmm. What I was hearing hmm. was when you talked about not knowing what the outcome would be or like some sort of fear of not having control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I can see that. I can see what you're saying. Uh, what it feels like more is not having options. Because, like, do I want to... Now that I've had these experiences, do I want to do it differently next time? Or do I not? It's like, how do I even give myself options to... You know, like, choose and decide. Which, yes, then that goes into control. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oof control mm -hmm. such a uh, the attachment to or the need for control and the attachment to control to me is a way to try to guarantee yourself safety mm 
And I guess I'm wondering, what are you feeling unsafe from? Don't know. Haven't gotten that far down yet. Mm. Yeah. I will say where the little knot for me is that it hides inside this other thing that I do value about myself. Is that uh, I'm a learner. I, you know, like I learn through experiences. I do stuff and I extract a lot of information from it. And I'm good at it. It's what makes me a good teacher as well. <laughs> at least I think I'm a good teacher. Yeah. Um, so it's like this need for control hides inside this really positive thing. And for me, it feels like separating out when meaning making is useful and when meaning making is just a coping mechanism mm. to avoid that um, yeah to avoid that fear are you aware of a difference when you're not yet separating it? not yet yeah because I don't I don't think I even fully know what it feels like to be in an, an experience without making meaning of it mm. yeah it's like even sometimes in uh, with plant medicine ceremonies that I've been on you know people are always like how the hell are you able to like create such a clear narrative arc for your entire journey how are you so lucid about what happened so even then you know it's like that mechanism is um, online for me do you feel like when you're on, when you're doing the plant medicine ceremonies and you're making this clear arc, are you feeling really, really confident that the clear arc is exactly is what is actually happening and connecting everything? Such a complicated question, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes and no. Yes, in the sense that um, my impulse, since I have those layers of security cameras, mm -hmm. is to check the narrative over and over and over again. So it isn't a clear narrative that comes out. It's like a million different possibilities for what the meaning of this experience is, like fractally expanding out. And then they eventually kind of like come back together into like one thing which I'm aware is limited by what I can see. So there's definitely maybe going to be blind spots, but if I don't know what the blind spots are yet, then this is what I have for now. So I am sure to the extent that I can be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> Enough. I am, I really am curious what happens if you're not able to make meaning of it? I'll tell you when I manage to have that experience. <laughs> okay, are you able to imagine or like just go in and say and be like, okay, there's no meaning and try to actually experience it in your system? What would happen if there was no meaning about what, say what's happening right now? Mm -hmm. If you just tuned into, there's no meaning to this. Can I just be in the? Can I be in no meaning? Uh, I feel like my response is gonna be so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> to me or to you? Both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get frustrated. Yeah. What you just said just now. Uh -huh already the moment I'm trying to make no meaning of it, then the meaning here is to make no meaning. And that's the meaning. Okay. And then immediately it's like, oh yeah, Zen thing, because this is a healing arc and this is really what you need. And here's the wound and you're starting to uh, experience the fear of not being in control, blah, blah, blah. Here's the meaning. So then there is a meaning. Uh, there is a, you're making the meaning. Right. <laughs> it, it just happens. Um, I get glimpses of it, but it's like this, um, yeah, like what a, that meaning making part of me comes in so quickly and so clearly. 
I can exert a lot of effort in trying to uh, shelf it or compartmentalize it or put it away. But then that itself takes up all of the effort. And then I'm not experiencing the -hmm. space that is left from not meaning making. Mm -hmm. So yeah, still, still on that little journey. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. There is a, there is a real fear in there Mm -hmm. of not having meaning of what it's like to not be in a situation where there's no meaning Yeah, or to not have an understanding, not feel like you have an understanding of what's happening. Yeah. Um, when I've danced around in it, um, something that it's this energy that comes up, um, hard to put words to, but it feels like something like, uh, waste or like usefulness, like, what is a life that is used well, you know, like time and, you know, wasting time or wasting a life kind of, yeah, but I don't have the the specifics of it. Yeah. But there is this impulse of like, going full nihilistic, right? It's like, if, there is no meaning to life because we are all just weird consciousness that just like popped up here and we're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. And you know, capitalism doesn't make sense. My job, if it's in that structure, doesn't really make sense. Religion doesn't make sense. All of these things don't make sense. Like what is there now? <laughs> and then it's like, the answer is, it's just some life for you to experience. Then the next question that comes up is, well, what do I want to experience? And I want to experience as much of it as I can. Mm. So then that, I feel like that is where kind of like that, I don't want to waste time in a way, you know, like I want to have experiences and extract as much from each experience as I can. Yeah. And, but then, you know, if I ask like, well, what happens if I don't? I don't know. Like the answer is like, just uh, straight, like what do you what do you mean? Like there's no there's no ability to even contemplate the what happens if I don't. Hmm. There's something coming up mm. from what we were into yesterday. Mm. <clears throat> And I want to ask you if you're okay with me bringing it up. Yeah. I'm okay with that. We were at one point looking into you and your inner child Mm -hmm. just being able to experience being a child Mm -hmm. without uh, this, this feeling like he had to take on adult roles Mm -hmm. and when I think of kid just being a child I think of experience without meaning Mm -hmm. and just being in this moment and whatever it wherever it takes them it takes them and then they move on to the next thing and the next thing Mm mm-hmm And they learn from it and they grow. Yeah. So I guess that's what's coming up. Uh, I still have this. I am. I'm noticing that I have this strong desire for your inner child to experience that. (laughs) Yeah. There might be an even younger inner child that I'm not connected to yet because the one that I'm connected to even yesterday like when he's given the space to just be a child what he does is what I described go out have experiences meaning make Mm. grow learn that's what he is already 
well, as far as I can tell, like I said, you can do whatever you want to do. And he goes, yeah, well, yeah, I am doing what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So is that just him or is there a conditioning that has already set in? Mm. Yeah, at mm -hmm. that age, I don't know. If there is, then there might be a even younger inner child for whom that conditioning hasn't set in yet that I'm still not in touch with. Mm. Do you want to be in touch with it? Sure, yeah. I mean, I'll... Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I want to be in touch with it? Well, the sense-making mind is like, it would be good to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that doesn't answer the question if I want to. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I feel like, you know, if if it's needed, I'll find him eventually. I don't think it's, I don't think it helped very much at the moment for me to go hunting for him. Why? Um, feels like even if I had, even if I were to want to connect to that even younger one, um, this slightly older one is the way to get to him. Right. So I'd rather be in connection with this inner child for now because this one also hasn't really been taken care of all that much. Yeah, so I'll work with what I have. And then if it leads me to that younger one, then it will. That's what it feels like currently, mm. at least. And also, if I were to go hunting, I don't, wouldn't even know how. Mm. Yeah, and I don't think that inner child would like it very much if I just went around, like, yelling, like, where are you? Come here! The one, you mean the one you're looking for wouldn't like it very much? Yeah. The, <laughs> if, I mean, I don't even know if there is one, right? It's mm. just, like, a theory. Right. But if he is there and he's hiding, then I don't think it would be very productive for me to mm. go around like, where are you? I want to be in touch with you. Come out now. Mm. Yeah. 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 It doesn't necessarily have to be that kind of hunting. <laughs> <laughs> there can be a invitation sent out mm. that I'm around. And, you know, if, if and when you're ready to, mm -hmm. uh, but be like, just, hey, I'm around. And I'm open to engaging with you. That's True. it. Yeah. And just leave it there. And maybe check in every once in a while. Like, still here? When you feel like it. Yeah. I think I think that invitation is there. Hmm. Cool. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for going there with me. Sure. I'm feeling also of tenderness and want to check in with you how you're feeling about this line of inquiry. I notice really little blips of, um, is it going to make sense to anyone? <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, but very tiny blips. And also what is more present for me now is I don't really care. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'll make sense to the people who it makes sense to. Mm -hmm. And it also, yeah. it, to me, is more important that it feels good to you mm. mm -hmm. rather than who's understanding it or not. Right. Um, it's not comfortable. I don't think I mind a discomfort. Great. Yeah. Great. Oh. Meaning. <laughs> it is... If we want to talk about meaning for a minute, it is a bit of a... paradox. That we can be attached to making meaning of something 
but really it doesn't feel like it's always necessary to make meaning of stuff. And then there's that line of when is it actually appropriate, when is it needed, and when is it not? Yeah. I know I've been in this loop. I've been stuck in a loop of trying to like figure make make meaning of something and figure it out and like have all the like this is why this is happening, this is why this is happening, this is why this is happening, this is why this is and like it's just I'm stuck in this loop. And mm-hmm. like what I really need to do is just step out of a loop and let go of trying to make meaning of it and walk away. That would be the healthiest for me in my situation. Mm. The loop for me is because even as I hear you say that, like it's not always necessary. I feel like my system's response to that is, well, yeah, it's never necessary. Like cats don't make meaning of stuff. Dogs don't make meaning of stuff, Mm. Mm. right? Like we're animals too. Mm -hmm. So we have this like intellect Mm. that's fun and useful for certain things. But we never need mm. to make meaning. So, mm. right? So, if like if you're saying about like when is it necessary? Never. Mm. That's that's the it feels the, good. Yeah, that's the truest answer. It comes out. So it comes to a question of when do you want to make meaning? And my loop is that when I ask my system, the answer is all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> and the want is so strong. Mm. Right, that like even when you say you walk away, it's like my system doesn't know how to walk away from the meaning making because yeah. that's all it wants to do, and that's where I feel like there's a mm. there's some sort of wound or trauma that's actually charging the meaning making, yeah, yeah, and I think I'm starting to see that, and it's it's so deeply integrated. Um, into my system that it's like well this is just who I am this is how I am there's an identification with it Um, yeah it like it feels like no matter how deep I ask the answer that comes out is this is just how you are this is your nature and that's fine hmm Hmm. And this is a nice answer to keep that mm-hmm. <laughs> mechanism in place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It feels good. It's it's a soothing answer to keep that mechanism in place, being like, well, this is just this is the way it is. And then you like say you're okay with it, but it doesn't feel like you're actually okay with it. It might be more that last part might be more obvious to you than it is to me. Because mm. mm. I don't... I can't feel any part of me that isn't okay with it. I can see how in certain situations it creates like dynamics or things that I don't like. And that helps me infer <laughs> that there's a hardness. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, does it feel good to make meaning of everything? Does it actually even feel good, the process of needing to make meaning of everything? And that energy you put into it? It feels really, well, one, again, it's so integrated that I don't perceive any effort. I'm not even putting in effort. It's like, it's just, it just happens. Well... You say that, Uh and then Mm -hmm. in our conversations, like yesterday, you're like, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you tell me how exhausting it is. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, but those are like pretty rare moments. Yeah, and I don't even know how it comes up. So that was the, yeah, um, I guess that's what I was going to say. It's like, it's so integrated that most times I don't even experience the effort. It's just kind of happening. Then in this little rare moments where for whatever reason or circumstances align, everything like slows down for a second. Then I notice that I'm tired. I have a thought about this. Yeah. Could it be, could it be that 
it's always exhausting. Mm -hmm. It just builds. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to a point where you're, you actually Mm. connect with how exhausting it is. And then you do something to alleviate that exhaustion and you can, and then it starts over down at, okay, I kind of emptied the tank a little bit on the exhaustion and now it's building again. Mm. Yeah. That, that sounds right. That seems to track. I'm also just now in the fact and the irony that we're making meaning of you making meaning. (laughs) We have a tendency to do this. I don't know. Maybe it's, ah, I think there's something about, I think there's something about you and this hall of mirrors and maze Mm -hmm. that makes it seem like it's all folding in on itself. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't usually, I guess I, I mean, I do make meaning of things, but I don't get lost in the making meaning of the meaning of the meaning of things Mm -hmm. until, unless I'm talking with you. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the club. That is quite a mechanism that Mm -hmm. is protecting something. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's my take. (laughs) Yeah. Every now and then I can like zoom out and then I'm like, you know, at a circus, right? Like you see the entire like hall of mirrors, so to speak. And you're like, there's a hall of mirrors. And then I can like see the whole structure of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it doesn't happen very often. And it's just like for the tiniest little bit. We had a moment a few weeks ago where we actually removed the maze. Yeah, different maze though. It was a different maze. Yeah. I, I feel I feel like this is the the maze builder. Like, so it's a like lot the, of the my... The game maker? Yeah, like <laughs> a lot of my wounds have those kind of mazes around it. But what we are talking about right now is the mechanism that goes around building mazes around each one. Because it's how I cope with difficulty and discomfort and pain mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. and so you know yeah it's the is the boss maze <laughs> <laughs> wonder what happens if you embrace this maze maker and befriend it first thought is it doesn't seem to want friends Mm-hmm. So control. It wants to create mazes for people to. Hmm. And that no. Okay, I don't know what it wants, but I know that it doesn't seem to want my friendship. How about your respect? feels like don't know don't care leave me alone to just do my thing hmm feisty yeah (laughs) (laughs) i just want to do my thing and i just want to build my mazes leave me alone Mm. feels like a crusty old man feels feels like the guy in up interesting the way you just said it it sounded like a despondent child yeah, I would say that the crusty old man in Up is a despondent child. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Well, <clears throat> yeah. I feel like we can take a little break from this and I can do some energy work on you. Cool. Sounds good. And I'm wondering if you'd like to set an intention or two or more for this session. Hmm. My intention is to just allow whatever needs to move to move. We will be right back after Ezra's energy healing session. (laughs) 
And we are back from Ezra's energy healing session. We ended up doing Laho Chi. And I gotta say, that energy was quite a bit for me. Oh, yeah. In my state. But mm. I, I, it was nice. It was really wonderful. And it felt really warm and uh, light and uplifting. But I was, I just noticing there was a lot of times I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, effort for you to bring in. A little bit to hold. Mm. How was your experience? Also, just so I'm clear, you meant the energy of Lahochi, mm -hmm. not my energy. No, not Got your it. energy. Um, I was in a hypnagogic state for most of it, which I really enjoy. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah, although it's funny because I used to think that I was asleep. Um, because I used to go into those uh, states a lot during yoga classes, mm. especially Shavasana. Yeah, I would lie down and just mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and I used to think that, you know, like, oh man, I must be so tired. I keep falling asleep. Yeah. And now I can notice that I'm not actually asleep. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, I don't know. It's a very pleasant state to be in for mm -hmm. me. It is. I get a lot of downloads in that state myself uh, that's what I like about it mm -hmm. yeah uh, you were very relaxed and there I don't even know if you were aware or noticed the sounds that were coming out of you no in your breathing it was like a, it was like a snoring but it wasn't quite like a snoring um, and so I was and I was like I was like <clears throat> There's something to me that says he's sleeping, but I know that that's not true. The other, the bigger part was like, oh, he's in that in between place. I notice my legs and my hips twitching at certain points, mm. but I did not notice the sounds. Was any did anything else come up? <clears throat> well, speaking of hypnagogic state, there's a. Uh, interesting related thought when because before you were asking what happens when there's no meaning making mm -hmm. then it's like the intellect has nothing to do so I slip into that state hmm. but like you say that you get a lot of downloads in that state um, I can't track my experience in that state it's almost like my system doesn't know how to receive things except through uh, the meaning making part so I may be getting downloads <laughs> I mean I can yeah. tell something is happening um, yeah but I wouldn't go so far as to call them downloads because I have no idea can I tell you something that was coming up for me yeah please it was take a sip of my tea here it was this question the question was coming to me does is he in this present moment ready to let go of the hall of mirrors meaning making mechanism don't know if this answers the question exactly but I something did come up for me uh, kind of almost right at the start so I can tell you um, a little bit more uh, about his feelings that I um, got clear on hmm. um, and it's why this little kid also sometimes presents as a crusty old man. Because <laughs> it's like he likes building these mazes and he likes playing with concepts and ideas. And that for him is 
play. Mm. And he finds it really playful. When it stops being playful is when somebody comes over and like, hey, what are you making? And then um, he feels like he has to answer. So since he's building a maze, answering is pretty much taking that person and throwing them into the maze. And yeah, then there's this annoyance um, where the crust, where he starts presenting as the crusty old man, is like <clears throat> a. If you don't actually like being in the maze, then don't ask me what I'm doing, cause I don't know. So I'll just show it to you. And then B, uh, if you don't want, if you don't understand what it is, uh, don't make me explain it to you. And what he would like is for somebody to just get lost in the maze with him. And because for him, that's fun. And he doesn't mind doing that by himself. He would also really enjoy if somebody did it with him neither of those things feel lonely what feels lonely is when somebody asks him what's what the maze is but then doesn't understand it and keeps asking him to explain the maze hmm. that makes me that reminds me of earlier in, in our conversation where you said i don't know if people understand what i'm saying mm. like there is a there is a concern there that they don't understand because not so much that they don't understand just that do I have to explain it mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I mean some some am I gonna be asked mm -hmm. and another yeah and another little piece that's coming up is also like um I think he's internalized a little bit that things go wrong if people don't understand so he feels a need to guide people through the maze or explain the maze um, yeah like when you were saying you got a little bit lost because it felt a little bit headspace and like I was saying that it didn't feel like headspace at all to me it felt like something really real um, and you saying that you were lost because it was going to headspace felt a little bit bad hmm. yeah um yeah or you know people get hurt or people blame him when they get lost uh or people disconnect um yeah i mean a, something to do with like a there's a little bit of abandonment stuff in there i think yeah like he would rather somebody say, hey, what are you doing? And then he says it his way. And then the person goes, I don't really get it, but it seems really cool what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why does that feel like abandonment? That doesn't feel like abandonment. Oh, oh. Yeah, but the, uh, I'm, yeah, sorry, you lost me. Hmm. I don't get what you're doing. That feels like abandonment. Why does that feel like abandonment? Uh, why does it feel like abandonment? Mm -hmm. It feels like somebody tried to connect to you and because you couldn't bring them in, they are not interested in seeing things your way. So they pulled back. Uh, and yeah, and the disconnect happened. Mm. So what he's internalized is that if you want connection, you always have to figure out how other people might see and hear things and translate it for them. Hmm. Exhausting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was one other little piece that came up too. And um, if there is a young girl one that doesn't even have that mace making uh tendency 
Yeah, because like this, I guess this slightly older one, you know, likes making mazes. But if the maze making itself is something that emerged from conditioning, then the even younger one is probably so far pre-verbal. Um, yeah, that I might need to tap into something that's like pre-existence in the world. Um, because what came up was... Um, my mom being a pretty anxious Asian mom, I guess it's maybe not unique to Asian, but the quality that she is anxious with is quite um, stereotypically Asian. Yeah, it's like sensations might be dangerous. It's not sensations are dangerous, but they might be. So like skin your knee, doesn't feel that bad. But then she will come in and go like, oh, you skinned your knee. That means there's an open wound. That means there might be bacteria. That means you need to put antiseptic on it. Like you need to assess mm. the sensation. It's not enough to just go, okay, here's the sensation. It doesn't feel that bad. You need to like check for, well, it might not feel bad now, but it might, <laughs> yeah. So, so I feel like that got mapped in pretty hard. Yeah, in terms of like, is there sensation in this experience and you need to make sense of it preventatively. Mm -hmm. Therefore, safety. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but funnily enough, there is a time and place for it because that got me thinking that that's also why I do what I do, which, you know, a big part of what I do is helping people make sense of pain rather than just, ouch, how do I make this pain go away? So then they take painkillers or they go to surgery and replace the knee or they, you know, just like never uh, climb up stairs forwards again. <laughs> or, you know, there's just like find ways to avoid doing the thing that stimulates the pain because the only thing that pain means is ouch no likey don't do mm -hmm. yeah and my work a lot of it is to help people feel into the pain make sense of it get more information out of it and see what the pain is guiding them to learn rather than just avoiding it how do you do that oh a lot of times is myself being grounded in the fact that um, there is more to the experience than just the sensation of pain. Yeah, it's like because I've made meaning so much, like I know that there's always something outside and inside just the raw sensation so because i'm very grounded in that um i feel like the container i hold is i know you don't believe that there's wisdom here for you in this experience hmm. i will believe it for you and if you believe in my belief I will do that until you start believing in that for yourself. Yeah, and when we can create that, then it's a slow process of getting people to uh, do the movement that causes them pain and then feel that avoidance and then slowly find the courage to like do it and um, pick apart um, what the pain is other than just a signal to run away. Yeah, then, then they might start noticing like, oh, okay, so my shoulder's hurting because this muscle's not engaging, or okay, like I'm having trouble with this movement because you know my arm bone is slightly out of mm. alignment. Um, you know, and then like almost immediately, once they notice that, their body also immediately starts correcting itself into where things need to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, and once they're there, it's like the process gets really quick and smooth. 
Mm. And then after that, it's just like building up the strength and habit to, you know, keep going that way. Yeah. But none of that happens if the only thing uh, that their system registers is pain. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. I can attest to that process. <laughs> you worked through, we did a, we did a session once mm. where you helped me work through uh, the resistance of using my hip and my right shoulder right mm. <laughs> or in, in better alignment and it felt really good and the pain that is in there left for the for a time i didn't continue <laughs> the practice <laughs> yeah i mean i also think that things like that is kind of its own it takes its own time in uh, what i can see um some other practitioners are pretty strict about like okay so now here's homework do this three times a week mm. um i personally don't feel like regimentation um it depends on the person yeah but a lot of times regimentation just builds shame um when people fail um, and, you know, given the kind of people who tend to see me, they are already interested in looking. So it's almost like it's enough to just open the door once and have them experience like, hey, look, you're moving things and mm. it's not hurting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's like whenever it becomes important that the body takes it seriously to like, OK, I really don't want to feel this ever again. I remember not feeling this. Mm. And then like that process naturally like happens and you don't need to put so much effort and discipline into it. Yeah. It's like connecting first connecting to that very real desire to change things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To me, it's more important than just like, you know, do this three times a day because it's good for you. Yeah. This, <clears throat> the desire you speak of, the connecting to the desire to change things is related to two things and one is with you and one is with me mm. and I'll say mine first last night I was seeing this part that was slippery and didn't want to my my view of it was oh it doesn't want to let go I wanted to let go and then I was asked the question, can you tune into whether you are actually ready for this mm. to let go? And when I did that, I was, that is being with where you really actually are in the process. And I was able to connect more with what was happening in me because I realized I wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't ready it to let go I was just thinking I needed it to let go mm. and I wanted it to let go I wanted it to let go but I wasn't ready for it to let go and when I did that I was able to have a deeper relationship with what was actually mm. happening uh, and that's why I asked you when I, we came back from the table gotcha if you were actually ready to let go of it and there's absolutely nothing wrong with not being ready to let go of anything gotcha i get what you're asking now um i feel ambivalent about whether this maze maker stays or not mm -hmm. it feels like the maze maker doesn't want to let go and what he wants is a friend like somebody to see him in his maze making and say wow this is pretty fucking incredible a person that's not you yes because we asked that earlier <laughs> if you're like does he want respect from you does yeah it has like... it has it feels like it has to do with external validation because he knows that i think he's in the maze making is incredible i really like it mm. and i use his gifts all the time um yeah so i really like it but i, I think there's this like the world likes it 
when it provides a service, but the world doesn't seem to accept it just as a thing that he, you know, should be like seen in and honored in. Is and there one more piece, yeah. uh, especially when it comes to um, uh, relationships, friendships, and like conflict? Then he feels very rejected in his meanings making in those situations. So it feels like there's an extra pain point there. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> so that makes me wonder is there a particular person above all else that he would love to have see him in his maze making? I don't know. All the answers that come up are like. First off, Eliza, my partner, um, but that didn't feel quite right. Then it this feels more like partner archetype, but that doesn't feel quite right either. Then it's like women archetype question mark. Then like maybe mom, but that doesn't feel true either. Hmm. Yeah, so not sure, but it feels like something in that realm of like. Um, the person who's most the person whose job it is most to love and accept you <laughs> whoever that is <laughs> i hear that you're still an exploration of it yeah mm -hmm. a certain person really pops out to me but <laughs> mm, interesting okay huh. i don't know if uh, it feels like it's more helpful for you to get there without me saying it. Yeah, I might ask you later. <laughs> it's good to know that you have a, an idea. Yeah. Did you ask that part? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like over that is the answer is not sure. Mm. Mm. Seems like an important piece. Mm. Yeah to really know who are you making the maze for? Yeah. Yeah, even that's kind of fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's like, on, on one hand, he just likes making mazes, period. Just inherently. It doesn't matter if nobody ever comes. Um, on the other hand, it's like, it would be nice if somebody looked at his mace and thought it was cool and on the third hand it would be even nicer if somebody wanted to wander through the maze with him mm. yeah all those all three things feel equally true yeah i feel that mm. and also reinforces for me the person that i have in mind hmm It's reminding me of something too, actually. There were quite a number, actually, of um, Aya ceremonies um, at the beginning of my journeys when I just started working with plant medicine, mm -hmm. um, where it was like wrestling with my intellect um, and like wanting it to let go. Um, because Aya kept pushing me to be like, um, the problem is, it's like that ego death kind of experience. It's like the problem here isn't actually the problem is how you're looking at the problem kind of thing. So the key is being this like dissolving of my mind, um, and then I would try so hard to like let go of my mind. And then suddenly she'll flip around and go like, no, no, no. Your mind is a wonderful gift. I'm not asking you to let go of it. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't think I got very far past that. It's just the answer isn't letting go of the mind. 
the answer is more learning the right ways of using the mind or learning how to use the mind in ways that serve me. Yeah, and I, now it seems like there's something funky about the way I'm doing the learning. <laughs> 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 Like you switched from, wait, you switched from uh, the way you were using it to the way you were learning? Yeah, like... that. It, that That's funky, the funky part? Right, so first stage before I came to Plan Medicine is my mind is always in control of everything, mm. right? So it has one way of doing things and a story. Then part B was, okay, the way my mind is controlling everything, bad chuck it away then now C is okay learn um, how well, learn learn to have uh, to come into right relationship with the mind um, and then now it feels like part B which is learning about how to learn <laughs> the mind so that <laughs> Yeah, because it's like the relating to the mind itself has a there's a way to do it I guess where does the body come into all this I feel like the body is what's learning to do the learning question mark <laughs> <laughs> I feel, yeah, it feels like this weird two-way kind of thing where the mind is understanding that its role is to um, use its structure building in service of the body. Kind of like what I said earlier where this thing shines, right, is when it um, works with pain and the body is just like, ah, 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 no, ah. And then the mind comes in and just like, it's okay. It's this, this isn't dangerous. It's just an intense sensation. So that's where it comes in and serves the body really well. Mm. Um, so I feel like that's the learning process that the mind is on. And then the learning process of the body is in how to support the mind, like, like nourish it also and give it material to work with rather than just um, being entirely dependent on it something like that yeah it's a uh, just when you were first describing it was just like all mind and I know that you you feel pretty grounded in your body uh, in my what I've been learning a lot lately is once I was in my mind all the time mm. and then I had to get into my body and be present in my body which was really difficult because it was scary to be in there and the more I'm becoming more present in my body I've done so much work on that that now it's like oh how do I connect my mind and my body mm. and what's mm -hmm. how do I interplay in that healthy exchange of logic and feeling thought and feeling yeah hmm interesting what that got me thinking of is when it comes to relating to people and words then that's when it's hard for me to stay grounded in my body mm. like if I want to just be in my body and express it that way um or if i want to relate to people just in that realm like i just don't want to use words mm. you know just like dance with people or be in a cuddle puddle or like take a walk silently yeah because there is a um, conversation here that can happen sans verbal um and the moment i have to like speak or relate through communication then i feel like it switches into the mind space mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I'm curious mm. when you were saying, describe saying that thing to me earlier and I said, I got lost, mm. but you said you felt like you were in your body. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if when I'm in my body and I have to share that with you, the I'm not able to n know whether the words are making sense to you or not. And in that moment, if you're actually listening to my words, there's no energy in it. <laughs> And the words are just almost like little signboards for you to feel what I'm feeling hmm. rather than actually paying attention to what I'm saying. Hmm. Yeah. I'm usually pretty good at keeping up with someone when they're speaking from feeling. Yeah, so there's something clunky happening there. <laughs> All right. That is... That's a mind boggler for me right now. <laughs> mind, mind boggler. Mm. Yeah, that is a point of confusion too, because I have definitely said to people before um, in uh, when we're arguing or in conflict and I always like something that I find myself saying is can you not pay attention to the words I'm using and pay attention to the what I'm saying hmm. in the words um, so that tells me very clearly that the experience that you had just now is uh, pattern that happens where somehow something is going on where I'm putting out a lot of feeling through the words but somehow something funky happens and people just get empty words hmm. without any energy in it <laughs> hmm. like there is <clears throat> this is and this what, what's coming to me right now is, and this is what I was talking to you mm. about, the actual connection right here mm. in the throat, mm. the throat to the heart that connects the mind. The throat is the connection of the mind and the body. Mm. Cool. And I definitely have a lot of throat chakra block. Mm. That's for sure. In fact, I've pointed this out somatically before, right? Like my, as far as my pectoral muscle goes, there's a lot of development here on the outside. Mm -hmm. Right. There's almost no development here on the inside close to the sternum and mm. a lot of neck tension, which is why my traps here, my shoulder muscles are super developed because this part has, yeah, no development to create that space. Mm. Mm. So it's all this way. Mm hmm yeah hmm ah all right <laughs> okay so throat things a little throat blockage going on yeah connection that connection that connected area hmm interesting uh feels like a nice place to land to me but I'll check in with you on what you think I have this feeling like there's so much more we could talk about and yeah there's a desire there to you know like keep talking forever <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and I guess also because both podcasts has um, that I've done with you have kind of ended up being a little journey into me mm -hmm. yeah um, and I think if we do a third one yeah yeah it'll be fun to just riff off of something for both of us totally i'd be into that too yeah yeah uh of course 
when we sit down to do that, mm. we'll see what's in the air. Yep. <laughs> Always. It just happened to be that this was really in the air today. Yeah. Because of the uh, ex- experiences we were in yesterday. Having yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would love that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And I guess that's not so much a request. It was more a reflection of um, where a part of me doesn't feel happy in ending it here. Mm. It's like, wait, but isn't there more we could talk about? <laughs> there is a lot more we can talk about. There's yeah. a lot more we all, we talk about often. Yes, true. <laughs> yes, I agree. There is a lot more we can talk about. <laughs> Yeah, but I think insofar as today's chapter, uh, it does feel like a good closing point. It does. It feels like we got. It feels like like that's something. So. That actually, feels concrete. That there's a throat blockage that is, between the head and the body, causing yeah. some separation. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like that would help. Um, in the relational aspect and then there are still other questions about what the maze builder actually needs and wants mm-hmm. yeah and other questions on whether there is a younger self mm-hmm. that is already lost inside the maze <laughs> mm-hmm. and who is the maze builder making mazes for yes that I think those are those are also great questions that came out of this that mm. it doesn't feel like those are actually able to be answered right now because I yeah. think you looked. Yeah, but honestly, like finding those questions itself was mm. <laughs> quite mm-hmm. a trek, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a good example of what I meant by like it feels like right now is like learning about the learning. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I get you. Yeah. I get you. Yeah, reminds me also of like with partners. It's like they're talking about the problem. And usually the problem can be pretty trivial, but most of the majority of the fight is talking about the way you're talking about the Mm -hmm. problem. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, This is something that's hitting me. Oh, okay. When I asked you if you were ready to let it go, Mm. I think that, at least as far as some of the stuff that we were into yesterday with me and Becca, who was with us, we mean her were maybe we we were trying to get you to get to letting it go or we had a thought and we were i had an assumption that we were working in the realm of you wanted to let it go Mm. and there was a frustration because it didn't seem like you wanted to Mm. and totally cool but it's so much easier to work in the same realm of, oh, you are in the learning of what's going on. Mm. And you're not at the stage yet of, maybe, you're maybe not at the stage yet of letting wanting it, wanting it actually ready for it to let go. But in the questions that we surfaced today, who's he making the mazes for? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. There's throat stuff. Like, that's important information mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that if you just were like i'm gonna let go of it you wouldn't get right yeah and or then, that you might even need before you're ready to let go of it right and i think that's where the pressure comes in like um when it feels like there is an awareness that at the end of this uh it needs to be let go of mm. yeah um but how to orient that as an end goal that doesn't need to happen anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with like conflict uh, in relationships, you know, it's like when the other person's unhappy because of a problem, then there's an awareness that at some point the problem needs to be solved. Uh, but how to not let that get in the way of talking about the way we talk about the problem mm. because that needs a lot more space than the problem itself yeah that mm-hmm. makes sense to me and that's a <clears throat> yeah yeah I also feel like an amendment to what I just said mm. 
this podcast has been about meaning. <laughs> so you've been looking for the meaning mm. of what this thing is doing. Mm. Not so much to get rid of it mm. as mm-hmm. of this moment. Uh, mm. And I think that that is a really big distinction. It's a huge distinction. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a great reflection. Thanks. Yeah. That's very helpful. Cool. <laughs> so the soup of self consciousness, and what's this one going to be called? The maze of meaning. <laughs> Maybe the maze of meaning, yeah. <laughs> I was also thinking, uh, maze, uh, meaning mazes and meaning ma- meaning mazes in the mind. Hmm. But I like the maze of meaning. I think that might stick. We'll find out. Cool. The maze of meaning feels pretty good. The mind's maze of meaning. The maze of meaning sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Ezra, for uh, going in and and looking uh, Thanks with for this stuff and with me and yeah, yeah. Thanks for wandering the maze with me. Mm. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it's always interesting always challenging (laughs) Uh, but almost always worth it (laughs) no it's pretty worth it I'll take that it's pretty worth it Uh, so uh, yeah great it was wonderful having you and my invitation to all of you is that you make a little room for healing in your life and we will see you next time. Thanks for making a little room for my podcast. I'd love to be a part of your journey too. Follow me on Instagram at a little room for healing for news, updates, offerings, and connection. To book a session with me, go to www.alittleroomforhealing.com. If you'd like to support the podcast, follow the link at the bottom of the episode description. Have a beautiful day.